not going to be talking about dealing with estimators or confidence intervals for one specific parameter with one sample. We're going to deal with two types. One is going to have quantitative data. We're going to use the mean for that. The mean mu is our target parameter. And if we're dealing with proportion, the proportion we're going to deal with is the letter P. It's going to be our population proportion, P. Now, we need something to estimate those population parameters. We used X bar to estimate the population mean mu. And we're going to use P hat to estimate the population proportion, P. Now, what a confidence interval does is it tells us the high and low thresholds for common values for the given parameter. So specifically if we're going to have um, let's say a 95 percent confidence interval we will be 95 percent confident that the true parameter is going to fall between the lower and upper bounds that we determine. Dealing with the mean mu uh, a large sample confidence interval is one that has an n value of 30 or more. As you recall, when we talked about the central limit theorem, uh, 30 was the number that we needed to have data points for to determine that any distribution that we pull the data from, the actual data that we're going to get for x bar will be normally distributed. And our first rule is random sample from the selected population. We have to determine um, a uh, way to randomize it. Again, simple random sample is probably the best, but uh, you need some sort of randomization done, and certainly it ha the data has to come from the specific population that you are interested in. Now, <clears throat> talked about the point estimators. The critical value is uh, the second part of any confidence interval. We're going to be finding these lower and upper thresholds using the inverse norm function. We're going to be given a level uh, alpha. Alpha is going to be a small amount typically. It should be anyway. And we're going to, uh, for confidence interval, we're going to cut it evenly and we're going to put half of it on each tail. Then to determine the critical value, we're going to take the inverse norm of said value of alpha over 2 and that will be our z of alpha over 2. That's in the upper part. Negative z of alpha over 2 is in the lower part. We are going to be adding and subtracting the value, so it doesn't make any difference which you choose. So as an example, for a 95% confidence interval, our level of alpha is going to be 100% minus the level of confidence. So we're looking at, if there's if we're 95% confident, we have 5% that will be in the outside bounds. All right, we're going to cut that in half, so we have two and a half percent in either tail, and we're going to take the inverse norm of 0 0.025. We've done that in the past. The inverse norm of 0 0.025 comes out to right around negative 1.96, so our lower threshold, negative z of alpha over two, is negative 1.96. The corresponding positive value is 1.96. Now you could just do it like that, you know, noting that the, you have a symmetrical distribution with the normal distribution, or you can certainly take the inverse norm of 0.975 to come up with this value, 1.96. Every confidence interval is broken into three parts. You've got the point estimator, which is going to be the center of the confidence interval. It's in the center because we're adding and subtracting an error term. And the error term is always a critical value multiplied by the standard deviation of the point estimator. So we have just showed you how to find the critical value. We've talked previously about standard deviations. And for a large sample confidence interval for the mean mu, our point estimator for mu is x bar. The distribution we're going to be able to use is a z distribution because we have 30 or more data points, 
so z of alpha over 2 is our critical value. And the standard deviation of x bar we determined earlier to be sigma over square root of n. So this is a standard deviation. Everything to the right of the plus minus sign is called the error term. Now, typically we're not going to have uh, the population standard deviation sigma, and when we don't, we're going to substitute our value s for that, which is an estimator of the population standard deviation. So this is our confidence interval for the mean mu if we have a large sample. All right, here's an example. I'm looking for different size confidence intervals. And in each case, I've taken a sample. There are 90 data points in the sample. The sample mean came out to be 25.9 for that sample. And our standard deviation for the sample was 2.7. The formula we're going to use, same formula I just showed you, x bar plus or minus the critical value z of alpha over 2 multiplied by sigma over square root of n. Sigma over square root of n, again, is the standard deviation of x bar. I don't have sigma. I'm going to use this s value to estimate it. So in any place I see sigma, I'm going to put in this 2.7. Now the first one, a 95% confidence interval, when we take the inverse norm of 0.025 like we did earlier, it's going to be 1.96 and negative 1.96. Now, we're adding and subtracting, so it doesn't matter which value of the critical value you use. If you want to use a negative value, that's fine. When you subtract a negative, you're adding, and when you add a negative, you're subtracting, so either way you're going to get the same thing, regardless of whether or not you use the positive side or the negative side. So you just fill in the values. You solve for the right side of the, of the equation there. Not really an equation, but a uh, plus or minus. So this value here comes out to about 0.56. Now, my lower bound is the x bar, or, or my point estimate, minus this error term. And that's what the, where this 25.34 comes from. It's on the left-hand side of the parentheses, just like you would uh, draw in a number line. And then we have the higher ends, or the upper bounds, is 25.9 plus 0.56. And that comes out to 26.46. So interpretive values are we are 95% confident the true population mean falls between 25.34 and 26.46. Now when we change the confidence level, our critical value is the only thing that's going to change. The point estimator is not going to change. It's still going to be 25.9. The standard deviation, S, is not going to change. It's still 2.7, and we're still using 90. The only thing that's going to change is this guy right here. So for 90%, our alpha level is 0.1. Half of that is 0.05, and the inverse norm of 0.05 will come out to be 1.645. This is the only thing that changes. This is a smaller number than the 1.96, and, and that makes sense because being less confident, the, uh, there's more in the areas at the tail, so that's actually less of in the area that we are confident of. So as we decrease the level of confidence, this side over here is going to get smaller. Or conversely, if you increase the level of confidence, your, your width or whatever is going to be increased, so your error term is going to increase, and it's going to increase when we do 99%. So the same process, 25.9 minus 0.47 is this 25.43, and the critical value, excuse me, the point estimator plus the uh, error term, 0.47, will give us 26.37, so we're 90% confident the true mean will fall between 25.43 and 26.37. And finally, the last one with 99%, that means our alpha level is 0.01. Half of that is 0.05. When we take the normal 0.05, we get 2.575. And these are the uh, three typical values, um, since given chosen values for alpha are usually 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10. And you can also see this error term is larger, making our confidence interval wider. So all other things being equal, if you increase the level of confidence, you're going to increase the width of the confidence interval.